You're tuned in to the National Intel Report, the real talk radio show. And to the generally dumb public, as to understand how the economy works and the matrix that our international bankster gangster friends and their 12 member banks inside this country operate, uh, it's now the mantra of the corporate media. The only way to fix the banking system is to nationalize the bank. And uh, simply put, folks, nationalizing ailing banks means the government would tell the bank execs to take a hike and oversee taxpayer dollars as they course through the banking sector's veins. Of course, this is according to Mr. Kelly. And Mr. Kelly, uh, Kelly rather, is one of these people uh, that is, well, he's the cheerleading squad along with Michael Hirsch of Newsweek, Nicholas Kristof, and Paul Krugman of the New York Times. And, of course, they have no shortage of economists from the IMF and other banker-controlled treasury to get out there and uh, push this. So the American people, here's the bottom line here. Seventy-five percent of the American people are against this thing because they smell a fix. But I would dare say that 75% of the American people don't understand the fix was already in with the fractionalized reserve system to begin with. Now they're just seeing the net effect. And, Bob, you've said this, and you've said it many times in many different ways. Bottom line is the crooks have taken off their, their, their mask, their little disguise. They're operating in full view in front of everybody, running the biggest scam this world has ever seen. With a compl- that's, that's true. With a compliant Congress pushing this. Now that's because they're all bought off except for the 10% that are compromised because of their personal lives and the 5% who are good guys and good gals. And that's it. I mean, we're, we're led by a, a leadership uh, of, of harlots. I, 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 guys, I, I knew 15 years ago when I got into broadcasting, I knew that things were bad and going to get worse. But I am astounded, and I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of things, but I am absolutely astounded by this. I mean, the unmitigated gall, the transparency of these thieves, to you and I, to Robbie, to the listeners of this program, it is literally unprecedented in human history. Literally. But they're doing it in the full light of day with a compliant Congress selling what is left of America right out from under. And folks, I, I keep warning you on the issue of taxes. You're going to be taxed out of your socks in every form and every direction that you can imagine and some that you haven't. And it's already begun. If you're a smoker out there, I said this the other day, if you're a smoker... Well, hang on to your hats. I think that even the cheap generics are going to go for five, six bucks. The regular brands out there are going to go for seven dollars or more. Uh, that's seventy dollars for a carton of cigarettes, folks. That's not even a luxury anymore. And, and then, and then come the gasoline taxes. And then come, and then because all the tax-based coffers out there are drying up. And, and, and if you run through this in a linear faci- uh, fashion, you go from A to B to C to D to E to F and all the way down the line, you're going to see this thing snowball. They're dying for money, and they're dying to get their hands on it. And whatever you've got in your pocket, folks, they plan on taking what is left from you. Oh, oh look what... I mean, there's already, I mean, this is what's amazing. I went and looked at some uh, legislation that's uh, winging its way through Congress. On Monday, I've forgotten who put it in there, uh, but they are going to tax. Because Senator Dodd, getting back to AIG, Senator Dodd put in the provisions that allowed AIG to pay its executives at $128 million. Now, they, they, now that this cat is out the bag and everybody's outraged about it, they've actually put in legislation that's going to allow the government now to tax those, those <laughs> brokers pretty much a hundred percent of their bonus <laughs> so they give now, it and now, they take it away now, but but the bigger point here with aig that everybody's missing because everybody's outraged that we've given this company a hundred and seventy billion dollars 
what they are missing, because AIG has become the scapegoat here, is where did that $170 billion go to? Do you know where that $170 billion went to? That $170 billion went to Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, UBS, and J.P. Morgan Chase. In other words, those entities that were the counterparties got 100%. They got 100% on their investment. And these are the same people who are getting the bonuses yep. that destroyed the company. And incidentally, yeah. I got some, I got some intel uh, this morning uh, from one of my best spies. And uh, he said that uh, word is uh, on the street in New York that, uh, that Greenberg from AIG is still running the company via Star, which is a holding company, uh, which is headquartered in, in Panama. And uh, so, you know, nothing has really changed. They're still a, a first-rate money laundering operation for government and for the CIA. And they're still holding all of those pension plans for senators and congressmen and and all the others that they handle them for. And as I said at the beginning... It's a $500 billion bailout. We're only up to $180 billion, but if everybody's patient, we'll get there. Mm. By the way, this article that I was uh, referring to, gentlemen, out of the New York Times, 10 years ago, September 30th, 1999. Actually, it's pretty close to 10 years. In a move that, and, and keep in mind, the other guru that is on the Obama cabinet is Mr. Irrational Exuberance himself. Mr. Greenspan made that statement, uh, and I remember watching it in, in front of the Congress. This Irrational Exuberance. Well, Mr. Irrational Exuberance, it was on his watch that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac ease their lending standards. And, and here's the short story. Now, this is 10 years ago, folks. It isn't like this just automatically or magically, whoops, it, stuff just happens. In a move that could help increase home ownership, rates among minorities and low-income consumers, and Fannie Mae Corporation is easing the credit requirements on loans that it will purchase from banks and other lenders. The action, which will begin as a pilot program involving 24 banks and 15 markets, including the New York metropolitan region, will encourage those banks to extend home mortgages to individuals whose credit is generally not good enough to qualify for conventional loans. Fannie Mae, the nation's biggest underwriting of home mortgages, has been under increasing pressure from the Clinton administration to expand mortgage loans among low- and moderate-income people and felt pressure from stockholders to maintain its phenomenal growth in profits. In addition, banks, thrift institutions, and mortgage companies have been pressing Fannie Mae to help them make more loans to so-called subprime borrowers. These borrowers whose incomes, credit ratings, and savings are not good enough to qualify for the conventional loan can get can only get loans from finance companies that ch uh, charge much higher interest rates, as you were referring to, Robbie, anywhere from 3 to 4 percentage points higher than conventional loans. Fannie Mae has expanded home ownership for millions of families in the 1990s by reducing down payment requirements. This is according to Frank D. Rains. Fannie Mae's chairman at the time and chief executive officer, yet, and I'm quoting, they remain, there remain too many borrowers whose credit is just a notch below what our underwriting has required, who have been relegated to paying significantly higher mortgage rates in the so-called subprime market. In moving, even tentatively into the new area of lending, Fannie Mae is taking on significantly more risk, which may not pose any difficulties during flush economic times, but the government subsidized corporation may run into trouble in an economic downturn, prompting a government rescue similar to that of the savings and loan industry of the 1980s. Ten years ago. Somebody made the point yesterday that isn't Mario Cuomo, wasn't Mario now uh, the AG in New York that's going after AIG? Wasn't he the head of uh, Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae or something? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, he was involved, but he was not a top player. <coughs> Let's go to the phone. I think you're thinking of the gentleman from Texas uh, who has an Hispanic surname. 
who is also on the board of uh, Countrywide. Oh, Cisneros. So Cisneros. Yeah. yeah. In the Cisneros. Yeah. In the Cisneros. Cisneros. That's it. Yeah. By the by the way, I I I, I did not he ask. Doesn't speak French. <laughs> I did not ask this question. How, how do you like uh, Obama's pick for the CIA, Bob? 